What is good in your family? It's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I'm going to be talking about the one and only Neo stock, what you should be looking after for the future. I'm also going to break down what the data is telling us about Neo, what's going on with the overall market for tomorrow, and why I do expect a very wild day for tomorrow based off what we're seeing in the charts right now. I'm also going to break down what's happening with the NEO share price because, yes, we did have a potential head and shoulders forming, but it did actually fail to make that happen. And now we do have this setup right here, which may drag NEO down a little bit lower. Now, before I break down about what's going on with NEO, why on earth we are seeing some more bearish signals and why on earth the market is performing the way it is, I do have to mention a couple of things before starting. Firstly, I'm not a financial planner. Make sure you take none of this as financial advice whatsoever. And also, if you guys can, please smash the like button if you want to see more videos like this. It not only benefits me, it benefits the entire community as a whole. And the last thing is, if you guys can, please check out the Moomoo link down below and in the description. If you sign up for Moomoo, the link down below and deposit 100 bucks into the account, you're guaranteed 5 free stocks, plus you'll have free level 2 data with $0 in trading commissions. It's a limited time offer. The offer ends in just uh, 5 days check it out before they run out with that out of the way let's get on with the video so neo is actually down about 1.6 percent for the day it did take a bit of a hit today and what happened was neo wanted to get that balance and wanted to start pushing up but the whole market got smacked and as the market got smacked neo ended up coming down too so i warned everyone of two possibilities i told you that there is a good chance neo would try to get that balance and try to form this right shoulder for the head and shoulders but the ultimate destination would clearly be down and i also told you that you have to watch this channel right here right i, I highlighted this area i told you if neo broke below this 10.6 area it would probably come tumbling down and that would be like the the breakout that kind of invalidates this head and shoulders and that is what ended up happening so i warned you about both of the possibilities i did think we'd get this right shoulder i was hoping for it but it ended up failing to do that that's because the market ended up also failing what am i talking about well it's this level right here i showed you guys this channel on spy that was holding up over the last uh, couple of weeks and then what happened was i told you that look we we did get the bounce yesterday we actually closed right here yesterday and i was hoping for a nice bounce the bounce came but we failed to establish this area we failed to hold and the market came all the way down and we broke below 410 so the next major level was that 4 <coughs> excuse me sorry guys 408 area and then we failed right there and came all the way down to about 405 405.8 is where we bounced off of and you could see right there, we actually saw the market fail. This is the, one of the first times this happened. This is the first time it happened in many weeks. This failure to actually hold this channel. It's been many weeks since mid-January, since the first week of January, this actually existed. And now we broke it, which is a very bearish signal. On the daily charts, we also have a potential crossover that's forming on the MACD, which would be bearish, showing more bearish momentum. This is telling me that the market is slowing down. However, we still need a little bit more confirmation. Yes, it is starting to come down. It is starting to slow down. There is still the possibility of us chopping a little bit more. We only have two full trading days, which are Friday and, and uh, Monday, until CPI comes out, which is right before the market opens on Tuesday. So, you know, CPI could be the game changer for the bulls or the bears. It could cause the market to pump, or it might just rug pull us, and we might just see this thing come down, just like how the market came down in August. That seems very probable, very likely, and if that's the case, there will be lots of pain for stocks. But I just want to warn you guys about other things. Just so you guys know, for the market, we have PayPal's earnings coming out very soon. After the market closes, we're almost there. We're basically there, but it's going to come out a little bit later. And then we also have Lyft and other ones. Most earnings were okay. We have Honda tomorrow, and that's about it. Nothing too huge. For Friday, we have some consumer sentiment data coming out. This will give us good information about what's happening to consumers. We also have some Fed speakers coming out for tomorrow, so be very, very careful. This, in turn, is actually going to give us a good idea of what's going on in the minds of everyday consumers and this will affect how the market ends up uh, projecting different nuances so please be ready for that it's not that massive honestly compared to other pieces of data like jobless claims but at the end of the day it still in turn could actually help us the market got a nice gap up because jobless claims was high 
That means there were more people filing for unemployment, which is a good sign for the markets. I also want to note that when you look at the fear and greed index, when we get to these greedy levels, this tends to mark the tops in the market. We may have already seen the top and the market is likely going to start downtrending now that this is playing out. So just be ready for it. Uh, is this likely to play out? Yes. Can I promise it? No. It also depends on CPI, which is coming out in just a couple of days. So just be ready. NEO is underperforming compared to the market. We can see the data right here. NEO is down uh, quite significantly compared to how much the market is down. We have been underperformed, but I do believe we're kind of like basing to a point where NEO will likely not crash as hard. But there are other things you have to remember, and that's the fact that the market will still have an effect on it. I also want to note that Fridays are only green about 53% of the time for NEO. So please be ready for that. And during the fourth hour is when NEO tends to have its best hour. We tend to be kind of slow in the beginning. Uh, the short interest has been cooling off, but nothing too significant. And NEO fell at 38 million for its volume. So overall, the volume is very close to average, not that far off. And we are seeing another increase in the short volume percentage, showing more of the shorts are coming in. And a lot of, a lot of the volume is short volume. So please be ready. Now, I'm, I'm talking about all of this because, look, there are things that are moving NEO's share price, but the NEO ES8 and the big innovations from this company still tell me it has good fundamentals. I'm still bullish because of that, but for the short term, there might be some pain to come, and I think it's very important to be prepared for that. So what am I seeing in the markets? We did break out of this channel. We might get a bit of a rebound tomorrow. I think it's going to be just very choppy. And we might have either another very flat day, maybe even a red day if the market does panic. So I am prepared for more potential downside. Uh, if you look at the overall trend, we're losing bullish momentum and people are starting to panic. So it's looking to me like we're going to chomp back and forth a lot tomorrow. I don't really see us getting a big rally. I mean, it is possible, but it seems unlikely. We might rebound into open, get, try to get back above 410, and then maybe come down and just chop back and forth. And we could get another big sell-off looking at what the MACD is telling us on SPY. So please be ready because of that. Now, even though I am seeing the VIX starting to pop out, which is negative for the stock market, the VIX did get its breakout. And I do believe it's going to continue climbing to these much higher levels as the days go on, as implied volatility increases, the, the values and premiums of the options are going to continue to go up. So please be prepared for this. This will affect the way traders make money. For Neil, all this data is telling me that, yeah, she might try to get a small pop tomorrow. It might be very min minuscule, but I, I want to note that now we have resistance at 10.8 and 11.3. If we do manage to get back to those levels, I'm not really seeing it. I think she might try to get to about 10.8, but it's very likely that we're going to get another rejection and come all the way down, I think, to the 10.2s for the gap fill. And then after that, we are going to likely get close to this $10 zone. If you break below 10, the 9.7 is going to be the next support. But notice how NEO is not crashing as hard because we're slowly getting closer to where we'd like to base. So I do think tomorrow we're going to try to get to about 10.8. Maybe get a rejection, slowly come right back down, and we might close a little bit red again. And I do think we're getting closer to this $10 mark. All right, so please be ready for those levels. I want to be as clear as possible. Uh, I want to keep this on here, this head and shoulders that I was talking about, because I don't want to just delete it immediately. I just want to let you know that this was a possibility that I was looking out for. It was very possible. Neo looked like it wanted to make it happen, but the market failed on us, and now Neo is likely going to get dragged down because of it. So please be prepared for lots of choppy price action. I think Neo is going to get a pop tomorrow into open. Then she might get a rejection and then try to fill the gap right here, taking us down to the 10 uh, the very low 10s, I think we are very close to filling it. If not, we already filled it. But even if we filled it, it doesn't really matter. I do still see Neo coming down back to this like $10 area very, very soon. So please be ready for it. Very, very important stuff. And on the daily, I just want to note that from a daily standpoint, we do have another crossover on the MACD, which is telling me that I think Neo is likely going to see even more downside. There is this gap right here. Uh, I do think Neo is very close to filling it on the daily. That's the one I was referring to. But even if that happens, like I said, the next key level is actually around this $10 area. 
Neo might come down here first before anything else happens. We might try to get a bounce tomorrow and try to get back to 10.8, but if we fail to do that, it's going to likely slowly come back to this $10 area. So I wanted to make that clear. I want to thank you all for so much for listening. Please have a great rest of the day. And remember, Neo to the moon, because the long-term future is still incredibly bright. And I do think tomorrow is going to be very, very wild. So be ready. We might see lots of volatility, and we're going to see a war between the bears and the bulls. As of right now, the bears have the edge, so please be prepared. Thank you, and peace out.